This video will cover the topic, finding the time given an exponential function with base e that models a real world situation. When we have an exponential function that models a real world situation, we first plug any known values into our model, and then use algebra to solve for any unknown values. Let's break it down with an example. The number of milligrams D of H of a certain drug that is in a patient's bloodstream H hours after the drug is injected is given by the following function. D of H, H equals 30 E to the negative 0.35 H. When the number of milligrams reaches 11, the drug is to be injected again. How much time is needed between injections? Round your answer to the nearest tenth and do not round any intermediate computations. In this problem, D represents the amount of a drug that is the patient's bloodstream and it is based on H, which represents how much time has passed since the drug was administered in hours. The problem wants us to find out how much time will pass after the drug is injected until the amount of the drug in the bloodstream reaches 11 milligrams. First, let's think about which variable we are actually solving for. Well, the problem is asking how much time is needed between injections, and H measures time since the last injection, so is H the variable we're solving for? It is. Great. Now we know what value we are trying to find. Is there any information that the problem tells us? The problem also states that the number of milligrams must be 11 before another injection is administered. Right. So where should we use that number 11? I'm not sure. You said that the number of milligrams must be 11. Which variable stands for the number of milligrams? D of H. Right. So we replace D of H with 11? Exactly. Now we see that 11 is equal to 30 e to the negative 0.35 h. Like we said earlier, we are trying to solve for h. First we can divide both sides by 30 to get 11 over 30 equals e to the negative 0.35 h. How do we get rid of the e raised to an exponent? Whenever we have e raised to some power and we want to get rid of that e in the base to solve for something in the exponent, we can take the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation, like this. Natural log of 11 over 30 equals natural log of e to the negative 0.35 h. And when we simplify this, we see that natural log of 11 over 30 is equal to now negative 0.35 h. Where did the e go on the right side? Great question. Remember that the natural logarithm is the same as a logarithm with a base of e. So this expression is the same as log base e of e to the negative 0.35 h. A logarithm is equal to whatever exponent you must raise to the base in order to equal the value inside of the logarithm. In our example, what value do we have to raise e to to get e to the negative 0.35 h? Isn't it negative 0.35 h? Right. Log base e of e to the negative 0.35 h equals negative 0.35 h. So we can replace that in our equation. Now that we've found that natural log of 11 over 30 is equal to negative 0.35 h, we can divide both sides by negative 0.35. And we find that h equals negative natural log of 11 over 30 over 0.35. That's our exact answer. We can use a calculator to find an approximate decimal answer. If we do this, we find that the answer is approximately 2.9 hours. So just to review, when we have an exponential function that models a real world situation, we first plug any known values into our model and then use algebra and maybe even logarithms to solve for any unknown values. Right.